today something very special happened because um, we, dear reader, and I, Shu, Shu says, um, we plan to send each other gifts for our September birthday celebrations. Books, of course. Books. <laughs> Finally arrived. I'm so glad she's happy with what I sent her. Um, I, I just really want to film and document <laughs> my unpacking of her gift. I just really want to document this special moment because I'm so excited to to see what she thinks is a good fit for me as a reader. Um, she's so sweet. She's telling me that she was thinking of me while she was reading this book. So My guess is that it might be a, a thriller because she's an expert in that genre. It could also be a romance because we both also jive with romance. Um, but if she's thinking of me, it could be literary fiction as well. I don't know. I don't know. Something psychological, perhaps? Let's open it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Oh my god, it's so pretty! Why are you asking for forgiveness for the packaging? This is so pretty! Are you kidding me? <laughs> of literary fiction and weird. <laughs> because it's so sweet. Oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> Sis! Sis! I've... No! I've been eyeing this! You... You know me so well. I wanna cry. I I wanna cry. You you know me. This is literary fiction that got such a high acclaim from a lot of literary fiction booktubers that I follow. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> I love you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so speechless right now. Thank you so much. I oh my god. Oh my god. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear reader, dear reader, a great, wonderful, gorgeous friend. is a massive gift from my oldest childhood friend, Ira. I, I was so shook. Uh, again, I, I definitely told my family, my closest friends, not to buy me anything for my birthday because I really don't want to burden them to buy me any gifts. And I felt so bad because on the day of my birthday, my family and I went out to dinner and Ira dropped by because she was not aware I was not at home. She was about to give me the gift, but I was not at home. I felt so bad. So last night, she dropped by I was so shocked because I was standing in the street in front of our house waiting for her to arrive. Ira was driving. Ira learned how to drive. <laughs> she was driving and I was telling her how proud I am of her. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I don't really have an idea what this is, but she's telling me it's something that we need, so I'm assuming this might be an essential. Uh. I told her not to give me any spoiler because I will record the unboxing. I don't really have an idea what this is. Honestly, since she says 
I shouldn't drop it. I'm thinking it's probably something glassy. So, part of me thinks it's something to do with coffee. Is it like an equipment or something? I don't know how to cook, so <laughs> let's open. had been friends or classmates since nursery, mind you. Ira. Ira? <laughs> thank you so much. Oh. Ira, thank you so much. Essentials. Essentials indeed. Thank you. I'm so grateful for all the wonder people in my life. Thank you so much for making September amazing. I love you. I love you. Halfway through milk fed. Uh, I'm 39 chapters down, so I'm about to start chapter 40. Uh, this is the part where uh, our protagonist, Rachel, is coming home uh, after spending a fantastic time with Miriam's family. Before anything else, by the way, I just want to come back to this. I really regret taking this for granted. I should have really paid attention to this comment when I unbox the book gift because Shu said the descriptions of food is just chef's kiss. What an understatement because Milk Fed features perhaps the best talk of food and eating that I've ever encountered in a novel. This actually tempts me to look up and research whether Melissa Broder is someone who has a past experience writing for magazines, food reviews perhaps, articles about, I don't know, restaurants, because she does it so masterfully. I, I, <laughs> I'm so hungry every time I read the parts where she talks about the food that she enjoys, the food that she consumes, and where she goes to. <laughs> the early chapters where she talked about her childhood or her experience with her mother who micromanages or very strictly monitors her food intake, her diet, 
is sort of like horror to me, to be honest. I, because food is one of my love languages. Yes, that's a love language for me. I won't accept criticism. <laughs> but food is definitely one of my joys and happiness. So to read about someone who's getting deprived of that happiness is terrifying to me. So, uh, wow, wow. The part I'm currently at, she's coming home from having a fantastic time staying at Miriam's family. And inevitably, she compares the experience she's had with that family and her own life with her mother. And this sort of also makes me step back and revisit my own experience with food and family. I think I'm going to expound more on that later on. Um, yeah, <laughs> milk food is thought provoking and fun. Uh, this is probably obvious now at this point, but thought provoking is one of my favorite adjectives. If if I consider a book thought provoking, that means I'm very very impressed, you know. But thought provoking and fun is not a common mixture or combination. When something is thought provoking, it's usually you know depressing, very dark. But Milkfeed does it in a very rare, delightful way it's still dark it's still dark but there's a very multi-dimensional in the way that melissa broder approaches legitimately i'm very hungry every time i read this book i'm always jealous of what she eats <laughs> so i always have to take a snack is it too early to proclaim that this is definitely going to be a five-star read let's see I'll read some more. I'll talk to you later. I was having such a moment. I was having such a moment finishing wrapping up Milk Fed. And you know what? I can't help but think, because I'm kind of sensing a pattern, I, I can't help but think of this, you know? Dear readers' recommendations to me, the books that she's referred to me so far, for some reason, alright? For some reason, they feature some of the best endings. <laughs> Roger Kail Mary. Sci-fi, five stars. Milk fed, literary fiction, five stars. <laughs> when I was halfway through this book, I was talking about how I find it so fun and delightful that the food metaphor is consistently used throughout the storytelling of this novel because food is one of my love languages, right? And I, I was not surprised, but I was still so overwhelmed how Lisa Broder really utilized, maximized, really executed the consistent food metaphors usage for the love-making sex scenes. <laughs> I always talk about thought-provoking aspects of storytelling I'm getting sick and tired of myself saying that. I almost want to set some sort of a, a self-ban from talking about thought-provoking, but I can't help it. This is such an exquisite, thought-provoking storytelling. The part where there's been a heated exchange regarding the, uh, the Israel-Palestine de debate argument was such a stellar, stellar example of how you do thought-provoking because that's what I love about literary fiction because it can be in your face and rubbing the statements in your nose very straightforward very direct but the thing about literary fiction is it does that on all perspectives not just limited to one it does that on one on two on three on all perspectives so that it invites you to take a pick Pick your side. Who do you root for? Perhaps you disagree with one of them, some of them, perhaps all of them, and that's still a decision that you that you do. 
That's what I love about litter. <laughs> also, coming back, circling back to the love languages talk. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna expound now, right? Um, a confession, because you know what? In my family, all of the members of my household knows how to cook, except me. <laughs> so I know that's terribly selfish, you know, very irresponsible of me. I know that I'm a flawed character in that respect. <laughs> but yeah, when I say love language, yeah, admittedly, it's only about me eating, not really me cooking. My parents, my mom, my dad, my two brothers, my one sister, all of them know how to cook. Me, the eldest kid, <laughs> never learned, never learned. And it's only been happening recently, um, past couple of weeks, months, that they've been jokingly telling me, maybe you should observe, maybe you want to give it a try, perhaps you could learn, are you not interested to know how to cook? But you know what? My entire life, They've never forced me. <laughs> they never told me to cook. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really confident. I'm not really confident that I can do that well. <laughs> so why am I why am I confessing that? What is the purpose of me saying that, you ask? Um I guess this is me being straightforward as well about my shortcomings and how I'd like to believe that much as what happened to the protagonist, Rachel's life, that can be a character development of sorts, you know. Accepting your shortcomings, your imperfections, and that's a way to grow. I want to read so many things, but my absolute favorite parts are how the, the talk about love is always being linked or looped into faith. The entire chapter 78, that entire chapter, legendary. <laughs> I don't want to It's the kind of book that you would like to share with good friends. So I'm so touched and I feel so, so grateful to Shu, dear reader, for sending this to me and making me experience this literary fiction greatness thirst and hunger for good storytelling quenched my heart is so full and so satisfied milk fed what a feast five stars what a grand unforgettable way to wrap up september Sure. Thank you so much. Dear reader, you're a good reader, a good friend. Thank you so much.